Hi, welcome to Crafting with Kimberly. I'm Kimberly Canale, and today we're going to make felted hearts. You can see that I've decorated this with some white, some plain little red ones, hung it on some fishing line with some beads. This one, I did plain hearts, but then decorated with little tiny beads. So it's really easy to do. Felting is basically yarn that isn't yarn yet. You get wool roving, and it looks like this. This is basically coming off of um, a sheep or an alpaca um, that hasn't been turned into yarn yet. So you can see it's just very fluffy. What they do is they shave them, and then they put the the wool on a card with, um, if you've seen those prickly dog brushes, and they basically brush it out, brush it out, brush it out, and in the end, you get something that looks like this. Now, if you wanted to turn this into yarn to knit or to crochet with, what they do is they either put it on a bobble spinner or one of the spinning wheels. And as it spins and goes through and pulls down in gravity, it turns it into a strand. And then the more strands you spin together, that's how thick your yarn is. So basically a worsted wool yarn is four strands of this spun together and then turned together. But to be able to felt, we use the wool roving before it has been spun comes in tons and tons and tons of colors, um, plain, natural, whites. Um, you can purchase kits. I bought this nice little kit off of Amazon. In it, it has a ton of tiny little packages of the wool roving, um, multiple, multiple colors. So tons of little ones like that. This particular kit came with a whole bunch of things in it. It had some like jewelry making supplies, some keychains, um, some finger guards. If you don't want to stab your finger, I don't personally like them. I don't use them. I just stab myself. <laughs> um, came with a couple of needles, packages of needles, clipper, um, some jewelry tools. This particular kit came with a foam block. You can hear that it's like a, not quite styrofoam, but like a styrofoam block. I don't like these. I don't like to use this particular kind. I prefer using an upholstery foam. So if you're, if you're going to like redo your chairs, uh, this is the type of foam that you can purchase. You can get an awful lot of projects felted on something like this. You can see... The, the wool roving sticks to it a little bit, and you can see after a while it does start to pull away, and then you just get a new one. Um, this is a very nice density foam. This is probably about a two and a half to three inch foam. This happened to be a good a good size. And you can see you can see the little fuzzies. Those come right off. If it gets to be too bad, what you can do is you can get your hand wet and then rub it all the way over your foam block and that will get rid of all the little fuzzies. So what can we make with, with the roving? Can we, you know, does it just have to be hearts? No, you can take um, an embroidery hoop like I did here and took a piece of flat felt and did a sunset picture, made it very textural so things so I didn't felt as much, so it was puffy and it stood up. This was some curly wool can come either very straight and flat, like you saw me hold the red stuff up, or curly like that. So I use that as texture. You can make little shapes. Here's a little, a little snowman that I made. This is particularly interesting right here. This is actually to save your materials. I did not use the wool roving because if you look at something like this, he's pretty thick and fat. That would take an awful lot of 
wool roving to use. What can we do instead? A great trick, use polyfill. Get a bag of polyfill. You can use this as your base. So you would just take some of that out, smoosh it together. And because it was a snowman, I turned it into a ball. So I just kind of rolled it upon itself and then started a needle felt. And then once you have your base shape, then you can take the wool roving and cover it as I did with this. You can see the difference in the textures. This you can tell is, the, is just the polyfill. It's not smooth, it's bumpy. Whereas this is the polyfill, but then it has a covering of the felt. So you can see it gave me a much smoother look to that. So that's the snowman. Um, you can get really fancy. This is a little turkey that I did for Thanksgiving. I really like him. I like the way he turned out. And this is basically, if you think of just a finger shape, I just laid it flat, made it like the shape of a finger, and then put colors on that. But again, all of this base is with the polyfill. I took a class and we made Frida Kahlo dolls, so you can get very intricate. Not too great on the faces, but you, you get the idea. <laughs> I absolutely love gnomes, so I make a lot of the little felted gnomes. This is a little guy I haven't finished it. He needs a nose and a little mushroom that he can sit next to. You can do flat pieces. This is going to be an earring or it can be a pendant or a pin. Um, so you can get really fancy with some patterns that way. They also sell kits that you can purchase. Uh, this is poppies. This has the wool roving in it has everything you need in this kit. It does have a needle in there as well. So you can you can get, if you're not sure if you want to do this and try this yet, you can get a kit, try that out and see if you really like it. Um, you can do pictures. Again, straight like pictures. And what I did is I just took a basic square piece of felt. They sell, they sell these singly, they sell these in packages that you can get and it's basically you know what you normally think of when you're thinking of felt just a plain flat felt this is this is made on a machine and this has a ton of needles that just go up and down up and down up and down roll it out and then they cut it so that's why this is so stiff and thick but basically this is the same thing as the little hearts that we're making just not as flat but when you take a piece of the felt like that, you can make some really pretty pictures out of it as well. You can use a holder. I like these little wooden holders. You can get these on Amazon as well um, because they do sell needles just in plain needles. You don't have to have a holder. This is what, this is what a needle looks like. You can see it has a little top and then a very sharp point. To put it on a holder, you have a holder and it has like a stopper. You're going to take your end, you're going to fit it into the groove that's right there. Carefully hold it, turn it upside down, stop it just like a cork and then you have your holding tool. A lot easier to hold when you're doing a lot, much easier with that, but no problem. You can also do it with just this. You don't have to have a holder. You can use it just a needle as well. And the needles are, are break very easily, so I would highly suggest buying a package of, of the needles, not just counting on just the one. You can get a holder that holds multiple needles. So if you're doing a very large space, such as a picture like this, and you want to do a large area, this makes it go a lot faster. I do have a tendency, though, to prefer 
just the single needle. You can you can get much more detail and it really doesn't take that long. I like to sit on the couch and watch TV in needle felt. As long as I have this here and it's a bigger area and I'm mindful of my fingers, you can really just, you know, look at the TV like I'm looking at you and just poke away. So really pretty easy to do. So if we want to make our hearts, another thing that we can use to get a perfectly nice heart shape, cookie cutters. A cookie cutter works great. You can make these as um, ornaments or anything for a special occasion. Just grab a cookie cutter in the shape that you want and, and use it. So I will show how to make the hearts that way. And this is really cool. This is a 3D printed heart. Our library has a printing, a 3D printing machine. So they made a bunch of these hearts to be able to use. So pretty cool. So if you're watching not in our area, check out your library, see if they have a printing machine, really cool. To hang the hearts, I am using some fishing line. So you can see it's clear. It's nice because you don't, you don't really see it then as you're hanging your hearts. It kind of makes it look like you're just kind of hanging um, out of nowhere. So fishing line works really nicely or any kind of thread. I also have this really pretty metallic silver thread that works just as well. If you're going to use thread to hang your items, I would definitely double it. So pull out a length of what you want and then pull another length, hold that in half, put your needle in, tie your knot. So you use it double just to make it a little stronger. To hang our hearts, we have these really nice hooks. You can buy these on Amazon as well. This is nice. It has, it turns. So if you're hanging it where you have a nice breeze or something, it'll turn around. That's nice. Or handy dandy paper clip. You can hang it from that. Or if you have ornament hangers, like the Christmas tree metal ornament hangers, those work great. That's what I have on this one. And I just kind of folded it in a heart shape because I actually put this on a vase of flowers that I had. So it was hanging on the vase. So, and then added some beads. So really, lots of things you can use to make these. Very easy. So I'm going to turn the camera around so you get a closer view of the actual felting process. So let's begin the felting process. I'm going to take my wool roving. One thing to note is it is better to never cut your wool roving, tear it instead. By tearing it, you leave a jaggedy edge, as you can see. You can see how jagged that is. If I cut it, it's going to be completely straight and flat. The, then the fibers won't mesh as well together. If it's jaggedy, that lets them have a much better meeting place. So you wanna tear some pieces and you can see it tears very easily. So I just wanna tear some pieces to get started. So now I have some pieces. I'm going to take my heart cookie cutter and I'm going to just set it down. Now I'm going to take the pieces that I've torn and I'm just going to lay them in there. Does it matter if they're sticking out? We're gonna flip everything around. But what you want to do is you want to go different ways. So I've laid one this way, I've laid one this way, now I'm going to lay one going across. I'm going to do it all again. That way. That way. That way and that way. So you can see I've just kind of laid them every which way. That's also going to give me a nice fluffier material and I can just fold these areas right over to get it to fit nicely in my heart. Because you can see, 
I can even somewhat pick that up, felt this wool roving, it really wants to stick to itself. So half of your work is already done. If you're using a shape, a cookie cutter, what I would do is carefully go all along near the outside edge. And you just start by picking it up and poking it in. Now, I am not taking my thing, my needle and pushing it all the way down. I'm not doing that. I'm barely touching this. This is just, if I were to do this on a hard surface, I would certainly break my needle. You're just basically using this as a soft surface so your needle doesn't break. So you're more pushing on your wool, your fibers. But by going around in a circle, all around the shape of your cookie cutter, it's giving you a nice edge. So I always like to start with that because if you just go right around a little bit now in the middle. So you can see I could at this moment, I could take that off and I have a heart. I don't need to keep the cookie cutter on there. I will for just a little bit more, just to really give myself a great shape, but you don't have to. If you want to freeform your own shape, you can. So you can see I'm just gently taking this, going up and down. I like to keep my finger, just this is how I naturally hold it. It has, it has a groove there for your hands. I just have a tendency to naturally hold it up on the top. And I'm holding it very lightly, very loosely. It, you're not really needing a lot of pressure. You're just really getting your basic form. Now, I've done that quite a bit. I'm going to remove that so you can see. It's nice and thick. And it's a heart shape. You want to go in all the angles. I want to go in on the sides because I want a nice shape on my side as well. So I'm just poking in this way. There's really no rhyme or reason. You just watch the shape that you're doing. Poking a little more on the center. The trick to a very nice felted item is almost constant movement. I'm going to take that off. You can see how easily I took it off. Look how smooth it is on the side that I was felting, but you can see on the back, it's fuzzy. That's because when you're needle felting, you know, you can't help but go in a little bit on your thing, on your foam block or whatever it is you're using. So what that does at that's taking all those fibers and pushing it in. So as I'm poking up and down, I'm pushing my fibers into whatever I'm poking up and down on. So that's why if you pick it up and constantly move it, then you're not attaching it to your foam block. Again, I can go in a little bit sideways so I'm not going in but it's just a very, very light touch. And the question is, how do you know when you're done? It depends on the thickness and the, the manner of hardness that you want. We'll say, we'll call it hardness. An example you can see my clouds up close. This is barely attached. I really wanted this to be a 3D effect. But you can see where I have my water 
that is much smoother and tighter. I, I poke that in my son. I poke that a lot more, whereas this is very wispy. Same thing with this. My little flowers, I poked a lot. I did a lot of needle felting to make them very hard. But for the sky, I wanted the sky to have a more wispy appearance. So I just didn't poke it as much. When you're doing shapes and figures, such as the turkey or the snowman, you'll see that I poked it much more. This is, this is very stiff, very hard when you're doing shapes. So with that, you're going to poke a lot more. The hearts, I've poked a lot more. But if you want a wispy looking heart, you can do that. And again, I'm just moving it. The nice thing about the smaller foam block, you can move the foam block as opposed to moving the actual heart. But you just want to get all, all your pieces felted in together. You can tell as you hold it when it hasn't felted yet. It's getting there. You can feel it. I can hold it very carefully on the side and hold it straight up and down, keeping my fingers out of the way, but then giving myself a nice edge. Spin that around, go all the way around to keep the shape of the heart, I can poke in more in the middle to give it a more definition of the heart shape. I could be doing this completely in the cookie cutter as well. Just pick it up, flip it around. So it's just a matter of poking, 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 poking. You can go fast once you get the hang of it. And it's just a matter of getting all the areas. Like I could flatten, I could flatten this heart completely just by continuing to poke in one spot. So if you want something very hard and flat, just keep poking in a single spot, especially that's how I did the flowers, the little circle flowers. The more you poke, the harder it's going to be. But with that said, if you want to keep it puffy, you don't want to poke in a single spot because otherwise that will just flatten out too much. You just want to keep going around. Keeping your shape. This is needle felting. You can also wet felt, which is a much more involved process. This is nice. You can take it anywhere. You can, you know, put a protective sleeve on your needle so you can carry it around with you. Um, if you're at an appointment or um, an event, you can kind of whip it out and, and work on it because it's quiet. And it's easy. With wet felting, you need hot, soapy water. You need, um, usually it's made with bubble wrap because that gives a lot of nice friction, some towels. So that's a much different process. You're rolling, you're felting, you're moving it around. You can wet felt on rocks. You can wet felt wet felt on soap. I've seen soap bars felted. So that's a completely different project. Same materials, almost. But this is nice because it's portable. And again, you just pick it up. You really want to be careful when you have it straight up and down. And see, I'm just kind of turning this around, making sure my edges are getting felted. Everything is even. So you can see that's pretty much done. 
How fast was that? It's got a nice, thick texture. If I want to get fancy and do some patterns, I can take another color of wool roving. I'm going to take a little tiny piece of this, and I'm just going to spin this. To make it into a strip. It helps if you have um, water nearby because then you can really twist it around. So now I have a nice twist. So if I want to do some swirls, I can lay out a pattern. And you just basically start poking this in where you want it to be. Freeform. Do some curly cues. Give yourself enough space if you're doing a curly cue so the circle you can see how that circle wants to tighten up on me. Just push it around, open it up, start on one side, poke it in, you can really use your tool to help separate, keep things open. I'm not going to do this whole thing, but you can see I can just continue to add in, pull pieces off, spin them around, add it into where I was, and just make a pattern all over. So really, really easy to do. If you want to do a shape, now this little gnome... He wasn't finished. He didn't have a nose yet. So to do shapes, I'm going to take, I'm going to do some of this peach. I'm just going to take some of this roving. That's a bit too much. He's a little, he's a little guy. So I can tell I have a little bit too much. Probably going to take about half of that out. So for this, I'm just going to, to make a ball, basically just take my roving, roll it on up, just keep folding it upon itself, set it down, hold it. This, again, you want to be very careful with because these, these needles are sharp. So you start to get your base. The trick to a circle is, is almost constant movement. You want to keep rolling it as you go along. You could make... Um, Balls like this, if you wanted to put them with your heart. Uh, I used wooden beads in my example. If you were getting a kit from the library, you were receiving wooden beads. But you can easily, as you can see, make your own beads 
just by doing this. And again, if you wanted to, for a little bead like this, if you wanted to wet felt it, just get some very, very hot water, put a little bit of soap on your hands, and then you would just take it and go like this and just keep working it and working it and working it. And that turns it into a ball. So you can see that's turning into a ball. It's the secret is really the constant turning it around. As you can see, when I held it up, it was a little bit of a cone shape. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way of the needle and out of the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. But you can see this, this gets together pretty quickly. So now I have a little ball to attach it to my gnome because I think, you know, a gnome is all about the nose. It's, it has to be big and it's what gives them character. So I'm going to place it here. And now I'm just going to poke around. poking through the whole body, connecting, making sure I go all around. I'm going around the edges because then that will keep it in a ball shape, but it will connect the back. A little bit through the middle there. So now, I have a cute little gnome with a nose. If you want to make shapes out of the polyfill, it's the same idea. You're going to take some of your polyfill. Let's make a smaller shape here. And again, just the trick is folding it upon itself. So depending on what shape what shape I want. Here I'm making a nutcracker, but it's going to be a gnome, so he needs some arms. So you try to get the same amount of material. I'm going to this time take it and roll it in a cylinder. I'm gonna start in the middle because in this way I can hold on to it. And for this one, I am somewhat going into the foam a little bit more. This is a different material. It, it works up quickly, but you'll feel it's a, it's a different, it's a different feel of how it felt. A little louder, you can hear that. But again, picking it up, moving it around, so I'm not connecting it in. And with this, because it's a shape, I want to keep twisting. Again, they do sell the finger guards. But if you're really careful, just be very mindful of where your needle is. But I always laugh and say, you know, unless you draw some blood, you're not a real crafter. <laughs> I don't think I have any fingerprints between glue guns. And I don't think I can ever felt without stabbing myself. So I have a supply of Band-Aids on hand. But it's really not that bad. I'm going to fold this on itself. to make a tighter end. And it's just a matter of going around and around and around and around until you have the thickness that you desire. For figures, you definitely want 
it to be a more firm, a more firm shape because you want it to hold its shape. Another trick that you can do is if you do do a straight line, I'm just going like in the middle of this and I'm just making a straight line right across because then what you can do, fold that over and you have a nice even edge when I fold that over. That gave me a nice straight edge. So you would just continue to do that. And then when you were ready to cover it, once you, this is not ready, but once you had your shape and it was ready, you would take your wool roving, cover it, and then carefully start to poke around it. And especially with this, you don't want to poke and go all the way through because then you can see it does start to show through. So I have to do another layer of my color because the, the polyfill was starting to show through, but you just put more material on it. So that's how you can do shapes. So back to the hearts. Once you have a set of hearts, here are some that I had already finished. I did a little swirly. It's kind of my symbol. I put a swirly on everything. I love that. Some little flowers on a vine. And just two basic tiny hearts. The easiest way to do it is if you connect it with a needle and a thread. If you're using the fishing line, it does have a tendency to curve naturally. It is strong enough where I could just go right, poke in and push it through. But the hard part is to really, by putting your fingers on both sides, you can, you can get it through that way. But it does have a tendency, you can see I didn't go right through the middle it didn't mat. It did make it. But again, if I put my fingers on both sides and push, that helps me not have it come out the other side. But you're still at the mercy as to where it's curving. You can see that wants to come up at the top. So much, much easier if you have a needle. I have a nice wide-eyed needle. Much easier, though, if you put your fishing line on a needle. That way, you can go into the tip, go right out, make sure, see right here, I accidentally went through the back a little bit. So you want to make sure you're right in the center of your heart on both sides. So now you can see my needles there, nothing showing through. I can pull this through. So now I have my heart. What I would do for this one I haven't done it yet because I wanted you to be able to see it. I tied I tied my fishing line through my bead, so that's my stopper, and then put the needle through all the rest of the hearts. But you can see it has a tendency to want to fall down. So what I would do is once you have your placement of where you want it, say I want my heart right there, what I would do, I would pull it down. I would put a tiny little drop of glue, Elmer's or hot glue, whatever you want. Put your glue there, push it up to cover your glue, and then let that dry. 
That way, it's not going to go anywhere. That will be that would be the easiest to connect it to a wooden bead. What I did, I took my end, put it through the hole. I did it again. So I came around and I went up through that hole again. So then it definitely held on to it and then just tie a knot. Bring your knot close to the edge of your hole and then you can take your end and poke it right back through the hole. Pull it through the other side and pull it in there. And then you can snip that. And if you really want to be safe, I would take, because Fishing Line wants to untie, what I would do is I would either take some clear nail polish or a little dot of glue. You would continue to string all of your hearts. Again, a nice longer needle is easier than one of the smaller short ones. So I would put, and if you wanted to decorate your hearts, I just took um, a thin needle and thread and sewed all the little beads onto that, and a big bead in the middle. You can decorate these any way you want. So once I have my hearts on there, and I would definitely, as I said, go through and put your little dabs of glue to keep them there, to connect it To your holder if you have one of these special holders just tie it again tie 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 do it in threes and then take some clear nail polish or a drop of glue put that there and then when that dries then you can snip the end very quickly or you can do the same thing with um, your ornament hanger or you can take your paper clip and open it up to turn it into an ornament hanger. You can curl that around and you could tie it onto that. And that way you have that. If you even did not want to Put them on the lines, the fishing line. What you can do is take, take your paper clip, poke it right through, close it up, and look how cute those would be as little ornaments. You can hang them, hang them anywhere. Really fun. Hang them on a coffee cup, hang them um, on your tree hang them on somebody's door. Just really, really cute. So you can see how fun and easy it is to make a felted heart. Use your cookie cutters, use any kinds of shapes that you want, make them flat, or get a little more adventurous and start to do 3D figures. They're pretty easy and adorable. I hope you had fun. This is Kimberly Canelli. Crafting with Kimberly. See you next time.